Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. In this video, I'm going to be installing a rear outlet toilet, also known as a back to wall toilet. Now, right now I am in Europe, so this is something I think is very common in Europe. I've never seen one of these things in North America, at least not in a house. So guys, one thing to keep in mind here, because I'm in Europe, I don't have access to my tools, which is going to make this job a fair bit slower than if I had my own resources at my disposal. But what we'll do now is we'll look at our setup. All right, so this is our toilet. There's a, a crack right there and also around the bottom at the grout lines, there's a wetness. So I don't know if it's leaking or not, but so this is a rear outlet. I don't know if this is like specific to uh, Europe, but the plan will be to pull the toilet out. We'll take this line out too, we'll put in a new one. And then install the new toilet. Hopefully this will be straightforward, I've never done a toilet like this before. Don't anticipate any problems, but anything is possible. So what we'll do now is material and tools. Alright, this is the materials list. So we have our, our toilet here, so there's the seat, the tank, the bowl, hardware for the toilet. Gloves. Flexible discharge line. White silicone. And then dish soap. This is what I need for a material on this job. So what we'll do now is a tools list. Alright, this is our tools list. So I've got a corded drill. Concrete bits, socket set, pencil, channel locks, crescent wrench, flathead screwdriver, Phillips, grinder, silicone gun, measuring tape, hammer, and a flashlight. This is what I need for tools on this job, so let's get started. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is shut the water off. There we go. Anyways, with the water off, we'll flush the toilet. So this is a dual flush. The small flush is on the right, big flush, sorry, small flush is on the left, big flush is on the right. All right, you can see the amount of water left at the bottom. So there are two bolts, they're both slots. Uh, these are plastic. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a container to catch the water and we will take the tank off first because that will make it easier to remove the bowl later on. Now once I push the bolt up, the water will come dripping out. So with your screw, all you're going to do is just hold it in here and then you can undo the bottom. Remember it's plastic, so it's not going to be that strong. So with one side done, I'm going to go ahead and do the other. Alright, so this toilet was rocking. So what they did is they put some silicone here, here, and here. And that was there and there to hold this thing in place. Instead of siliconing the bowl, caulking the bowl down to the floor, this was this brilliant individual's Solution to this problem. Anyways, so we have our water connection here. So this needs to be loosened off. Now, keep in mind that the tank is already loose. So it's very easy to knock it off. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to undo the toilet line and then we can remove the tank. All right, so for a toilet line, take some channel locks and just give it a turn. Now, keep in mind because this is plastic here. You don't have to go crazy with the tightness on this. Okay, so with the, t with the toilet line, line removed and with the tank unbolted at the very bottom, I'm going to take the tank outside and then we're going to look at a bowl. Alright, with the tank gone, you can see how much it rocks. Now, because this is a rear outlet, the rocking is not going to be an issue for 
leaks because the tube is in the back, but still, this should have been caulked down at the base. So you don't have a rock. Anyways, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take off the tank, sorry, the uh, bowl screws down to the floor. All right, so this is the cap. And then we have a rusty Phillips screw, but uh, the screws aren't exactly solid because the bowl rocks. All right, so we have our Phillips screwdriver. And the screw is stripped. Okay, so both of these screws are stripped because I ever tried the other side, but uh, based on how rusty they are, I'm not surprised. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a grinder and I'm gonna try to grind just a notch into it so my little flathead will fit. If that doesn't do it, then what I'm gonna have to do is cut the head of the screw right off and then pull the toilet off. If I have to go that route, what I'll have to do is cut the bolt off right flush to the floor because it'll have to be abandoned. So this is our grinder, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind this off right here, and hopefully this all works out. All right, so I ground a notch into this, or I cut a notch into this. No, it's not gonna work. All right, so I cut the I did the screw off the other half horizontally, so this part now can be pulled off. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to do the same thing on the other side. We'll see if I have more luck. All right, so for this pipe, it has a, a rubber gasket on the inside, and it's a friction type of fit. All right, so I thought I smelled sewage. And right there you see the hole. So I was correct, it did smell sewage. So what they did is they siliconed around to make it, I guess, smell tight, uh, and they didn't do a very good job. Anyways, now the toilet is removable. All right, so this is what's left here. So we have the two screws there and there that are rusted out, so I'm gonna cut them off flush, and then this tube needs to be removed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean all this up first. I'm gonna cut these two screws off because they're gonna be abandoned. Now, because it's silicone in, I think it's gonna be a little difficult to uh, take out. Okay, so they siliconed. I think they should have used more. Okay, so you can see that this ring, whatever it is, goes all the way around. Not sure what it is, but what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to pry it out from the very side. See if I can take it out. So we're losing about a quarter of the entire outlet. I believe that this is three inch pipe, and of course this is original to the house. So it looks like there's a Y, and this is the branch of, of the Y. And this stack continues up to the next floor. So once again, we're back to full diameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up. And then we're going to look at putting in our new outlet tube. All right, so this is a tube and this is ha it has ribs that are supposed to slide inside the pipe. So I believe this inner portion here is where those ribs are supposed to go in. And because this is a 45 degree angle downwards, of course, water flow is downhill. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to slide the tube in as deep as I can and try to get it on this inner area of, uh, of the pipe. All right, so let's stick this. So here we can see the uh, friction fit. 
Uh, what I'm going to do is, let's pull this out. There you go. So I'm going to grab the bowl. And then we're going to figure out, because this is flexible, we'll figure out uh, what we're going to do with that. Uh, at the end, I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to silicone uh, all the way around it, just as an extra precaution. All right, so this is the bowl now. So the screw on the left is not going to be covered. So what we're looking for here is the distance here. Make sure that the bowl is straight and on. It's crooked towards the wall. Another thing is that we want to make sure that the outlet tube is going to be a short run. And we definitely don't want a sagging section. So if the toilet is really far away from the wall and you have to expand the tube, if you have a sagging section, it's eventually going to start to get plugged up with solids as uh, as time goes on so that is the side view of the uh, of the tube going into the uh, the outlet of the toilet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark around the bowl and we're also going to mark out for the screws all right so we have our screw hole here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw A straight line to mark where the uh, the bracket is going to be all right so with a pencil I'm going to draw a line all the way around the bowl and that way I'm going to have an imprint of where to put the bowl back in all right so with the tape hanging off this side that is where our pencil mark down here is so with our block 35 millimeters will have it right near the, the very front, like roughly where this line is here. That's what they say. I think what I'm going to do is from the back of this, I'm going to give myself an extra five millimeters. So I'm going to go 40 millimeters. And that's going to give me a little more play for this block to slide back and forth. Okay, so that's the design for this so this is 10 millimeter it'll be drilled down into the tile tap it down with a hammer put this white insert in the block will go on top and then this bolt will screw in to the anchor holding it in place now i don't think the toilet is going to be solid so i'm going to silicone it in place after but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark out 40 mils from here over. Same thing on the other side. Grab a 10 millimeter drill bit, uh, drill the two holes, put the anchors in. All right, so I've got my marks for my anchor. I went a little bit lower. I would say go about three millimeters or an eighth of an inch deeper than the anchor itself and you shouldn't have a problem. But what I'll do now is I'll drill the two holes out for the anchors. So wear glasses and the earplugs. So with the hole started, make sure that you keep the bit wet. All right, so I lost my tape, but looking at the dried dust, that is deep enough. All right, so I got the left anchor in, so the right one. Goes in as well. So now, the block will go over like that, and then we'll put the screw into it. Okay, so I made a mistake based off the detailed instructions. These white caps are for the covers for the screws that go in on the horizontal. But uh, I've already put the one bolt down. Now I'm going to take a ratchet and then tighten this one down. All right, so we have the two blocks there. So the toilet, I'm going to put it up over onto the blocks. The tube there, we're gonna put it onto 
the outlet. I'm going to screw in the screws, just get them started at least into the blocks. Once that is all done, I'm going to test the connection between here and the toilet to make sure nothing is leaking before I go any further. Alright guys, I figured out the best way to do this. So there's a collar here, you have the black rubber down here, and then this is the other piece. Take this collar off, the black rubber, take that off, and then stretch it onto this here first. Once that's all done, put the whole thing back together like this, and now you can slip this on to here, and then the other end will go into there. All right, so this is on. Uh, it doesn't hurt to uh, mark here to make sure that this is uh, bottom mode as well, but this is now on. So expand the uh, this part here. Uh, have the toilet back a little bit and then shove that end in there and shove it in there well. Okay, so we have our tube here. Right at the bottom is where you're going to check for leaks. Now we're throwing three bucketfuls of water down this. Alright, so this is the top of the tank. So this is our fill valve. So the nut will go on the outside here. This will stick through. This is a plug for the right side. So for this you can either do it on the right or the left because we have our water on the left. We're going to put it on the left. So we'll stick that in. Snaps on. And I'll take this off. And then I'll put the ring onto the fill valve. Okay, so this, just thread it on hand tight. Don't use a wrench because it's chrome, so it's going to mark. Second of all, it's only plastic. Okay, so we have a gasket between the tank and the bowl. So I've got the left bolt on. So this is what it's going to look like. The cone is going to go on the inside. You have a metal washer at the top. This will go on the inside of the tank. And then this washer will go underneath the tank. And then this nut here will be tightened out. So that's going to suck this down into the hole here on the inside of the tank. And then you have the rest of the assembly here. So I'm going to go ahead and put on the other bolt. All right, I've tightened down both bolts. So for the head of the bolt in the tank, this is a 10 millimeter. So I put this on the head of the bolt and then I use the crescent wrench here just to hold this in place and then tighten down the bolt. Tighten it down until you feel resistance. I mean, you really have to go crazy. To crack the tank it is possible but tighten down until you feel resistance and you should be fine okay so before I install the tank what I'm gonna do is I'm going to silicone the flexible tube around to make sure that we have a watertight and airtight seal All right, so for the seat, this is the way it goes. So uh, the bolt will go through. This black piece will go into this here and then the uh, plastic washer will come up from the bottom. All right, so with both of these down, there's a chrome ring that you put on top and then the holes in the seat will go into these rods. Okay, so we have the two rods, here, yeah, the holes. So Turn this back and forth until the rods line up with the holes and then flip the seat over, put it onto the rods. Okay, so for our water line, it doesn't fit. I guess we need an adapter, but what I'll do is I'll turn on the water and we'll fill the tank. Okay, so we have water in the tank, so let's do a flush. So flush it a few times to make sure everything's okay. Also check the back with a flashlight to make sure that uh, nothing's leaking. Okay, so to all that, that looks okay. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to check up top. You see the one bolt there. The other bolt there. I don't even have a flashlight. But make sure there's nothing running down the bolts. Make sure everything's good to go. As long as everything is okay, the last thing to do will be to clock the bolt to the floor. Okay, so this lid gets screwed on. All right guys, so that concludes this job. So on this job, the one thing I would do differently is the outlet tube, the plastic tube. The rubber that goes on the toilet bowl, I would put that on the toilet itself first. Uh, get a little bit of soap and then stretch it on. You may need a screwdriver or two to get it on. Once that's on, leave it there for about 15 minutes just to... Uh, quote unquote break in the rubber once I took it off it slid right on later on and I didn't have any issues but if you put the ribbed end into the stack and then try to do it the other way and put the toilet part on after I don't think you're going to be able to do it it's just because it's such a tight fit because it's a friction fit that it's going to be a lot easier to put the tube on the toilet and work the other way the time on this job. The time was about four hours. I don't have my own tools here, so I had to use a different set of resources than I would normally have. If I had my own tools, I'm sure this would have gone a lot faster. Now, one other thing to keep in mind, you're going to have to cock the bolt down because if you don't, th this block system into the floor is it's not stable, it's not strong. With a regular flange that you're bolting to the floor, you have a solid piece that you're screwing the bowl to. You're going to bolt the bowl down to the floor. So it's going to be a lot stronger than this type of setup. So if you don't cock the bowl, like in the very beginning of the video, the old toilet, it's going to be rocking. The cost of this job. The toilets, the tubes, silicone, the cost was about $200 Canadian. I did the conversion. But uh, I think this is a higher end toilet. That's what at least I was told. So $200 after the exchange rate seems to actually be a fairly good deal. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope something here is going to help you on your project. When you need to go ahead and do that. Guys, tell my friend. Please hit the like button. Subscribe and I'll see you on the next project.